Good evening, ladies and gents. How are you? My name is Ethan Bowman. It's an absolute honour to be here. What a night. Isn't that amazing? I feel slightly sick of nerves, and I'm afraid I am taking up one of these seats, but the other three are being taken up by Please Put Your Hands Together for Johnny Green with Tom York and Tom Skinner. fans on Discord as well, so we'll get through as many of them as we can. Listen, congratulations first of all, what a beautiful piece of work, isn't it? Extraordinary. Woo! Absolutely beautiful. Um, was the idea that this was always going to be an ongoing project, or was the second album a reaction to the love that you felt from the first record? Was there an end and a start point? Or? I don't think we thought very far ahead, to be honest, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> um, it was, it was, I think actually going out and, and playing shows was the real revelatory thing in my comment. Yeah, I mean, when you're touring, sound checks are amazing because you have time to write new things and play all afternoon. You mm. sound check for like two hours quite often just <laughs> for the giddy hell of it. And he's playing backstage for another three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's just instruments lying around, and you've had lots of free time. It's, it's a great life, you know. It's very lucky. Did you did you pretty much then have an album ready then when you finished tour? Is that almost? Yeah. That's only thing you have to talk to the guys writing the lyrics. <laughs> 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 what was the the kind of inspiration for this lyrically then, Tom? Was there a oh, thing? Was there, oh, a, <laughs> was there a? Was there a? Do you think about that though, or are you just kind of? I try not to. Very yeah. hard. Yeah. I try not to think about what I'm doing a lot. <laughs> um, uh, a lot of it is like, um, if you imagine a really bad sculptor who doesn't really know what they're doing, they just put stuff up and then it doesn't look right, so they take it down again and they just keep doing that over and over and over until something goes like, well, I, that's okay, I can stand in a room with that now, just the bow. It's a lot of that, really. Um, then when you go to record it, that's a different thing again. Mm. So nowadays, I often turn up with... Um, Options. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see what falls out. Um, yeah. Well, we um, got an insight into that at the start, kind of the silent little kind of almost looking through the window at you guys at Abbey Road, which was just a beautiful kind of behind the scenes for us to see his kind of sound. Sound as well, you're welcome. It was, yeah, <laughs> sounded great. Um, but, it's, but, but seeing, for example, you react to watching the, the orchestra, you know, in terms of. You know, is that an element where you are kind of relinquishing control to a point, you're handing something over to get something back from your music that you would normally get from the audience, but you're getting it from other musicians as well. And it was lovely to see your reactions to that as well. Do you love that element of it, of kind of hearing people's interpretation of something that you've created? I think, I mean, you never get used to the sound of a real orchestra. It always just blows you away. Mm. And you think you know what an orchestra sounds like because you've heard so many you know, film soundtracks or whatever, and then when you're in the room with one, it's just, it's like a, it's like some of the creature. <coughs> Still blows your mind. Yeah, actually. So we, we deliberately did a scale thing on this one, didn't we? As well. Where we're like, there's three of us, so let's get an orchestra oh, that's yeah. stupidly large, so when they do come in, you really notice. <laughs> <laughs> what do you go into the studio with, though? You know, in terms of the kind of, the songs that you have? What state are they in, and what are you going in there? Whether you going in there with them, kind of pretty, fu pretty fully formed, or are you going in there with the kind of the you know the idea that you're going to play, that you're going to explore, you're going to. Some of them will be fully formed, but then you know, we, like, like Tom said, we've been rehearsing them on on the road. Um, but often when we try playing in the studio, it wouldn't necessarily work the way that it was working live. So then you have to rethink the whole thing. Um, but other things just kind of fell out, sort of almost by accident. Um, like Wall of Eyes was, was one of those songs that kind of just happened. Yeah, we didn't have any idea that we just started that one. Um, uh, there was a few, like the last song you heard as well, like You Know Me, was a, a bit of a maths puzzle. 
just uh, it was as usual for me. I turn up with a bunch of you know, phone record recordings, doodles that are not even edited or formed, or fairly shapeless, aren't they, Sam? <laughs> um, uh, we put them into shape, and then this thing appears that just has this amount of momentum. Yeah. So it, yeah, it happens lots of different ways. We should mention Sam, who's in the room. Oh, Sam. Hi, Sam. Congratulations on your wonderful work on the album. Can you describe that relationship, the, the producer relationship on this particular record? Well, we're absolutely terrifying, aren't we? <laughs> I can tell. I can, from experience. Um, but yeah, what's, what, how would you describe that relationship in terms of, you know, are you looking for someone to, I don't know, guide you or kind of be the kind of the, the, the black to your white or what what is that relationship for that producer that you're looking for when you go into the studio? Uh, God, that, that's tough. I mean, we weren't working with Nigel this time. We had a lot of shorthand with Nigel, but we knew Sam very well. Sam would work with Nigel a lot. A lot. We, we both worked with Sam. Um, there was already shorthand there. It's very, I think it's really, really difficult to explain what happens, um, I think each band, each artist is different, what they need from a producer. Um, but that's one thing I find very difficult to explain. I, I just remember once, um, with Radiohead, we tried out a, a producer really early, early day, just once, and he was with him for a few days, and he took me into a room on my own, and he said, listen, I want you to be amazing on this record, okay? You really <laughs> you're you're going to take off, it's going to be amazing, okay? Go for it, don't be scared. And of course, that just made me even more like, I'm not going to what you don't need. Terrifying. So, yeah, so Sam's not like that. Sam, there's just lots of, there's just lots of happiness. And yeah, we had a lot of fun, basically. What's your favourite part of making a record? Just at the end of the day, this thing that didn't exist suddenly exists. And it's better than you hoped it was going to be, and, and, and or just even arriving in the studio and having half an idea and it becoming a whole idea is also, that's, it's, it's all really great when it works. You were saying earlier, we, we do a lot of one take or less. <laughs> Thanks to Tom here. Yeah. You know, we're like, we've got this idea. Uh, oh, okay, that's done then. <laughs> Tom's amazing. Uh, yeah. Tom, what's your favorite part of the recording? Lunch. <laughs> <laughs> He's done all your work. It's the done. <laughs> yeah. Well, often, yeah, I mean, lunch should be in, in the spirit of one take or less. We've done like two songs before lunch, so yeah. it's kind of like a reward, you know. Yeah, let me the internet shopping in the afternoon. Like, some piece of it together. <laughs> I'm regret saying that. What was in terms of for you, Tom? You know, with this with this project, you know, kind of. I was lucky enough to see you like, the first time I saw you was at All Points East, um, not the summer day, but the summer before sort of thing. And you know, as, as fans as well, we're kind of watching this this kind of new sort of birth of something and not knowing where it's going to go. And, and immediately it's got this kind of connection. In terms of for you, kind of moving from this first record to the second record as well, in terms of what you wanted from it kind of musically and how it was going to grow as a thing, because it does feel like the second record has got, it's bigger, it sounds bigger, it's kind of... You know, there's more strings on it. There's kind of there's just lots of more more of things on it. Mm. For you, what did you want it to be? What were your thoughts going into the studio to make this new record in terms of your? Um, I don't know. I think we developed a lot of trust along the way, and I think that's a really important aspect of any band, really. But you know, especially with this with this combination of people, um, <clears throat> and that's been developed over the last five years really and we've done quite a lot of playing together now so I guess touring the first record really kind of solidified the, the chemistry that was already there I think but playing live every night just takes it to the next level so I think going into this record um, <clears throat> just wanted to build on that really and just sort of expand on that you know I think I, hopefully that's what we've done I feel like we have and it sounds like that I think so. Skinner's got a lot of experience doing lots of really varied stuff, which was really, I felt, very important. So he's got like taste calls that he makes that we wouldn't make, that we're sitting there three days later still trying to figure out some obtuse guitar part that makes no sense to everybody, nobody cares. <laughs> and he's already moved on to like, I think we should try this. 
that kind of thing, which is yeah. I really, really enjoy. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit about Mr. Paul Thomas Anderson? Because um, we've been, uh, it's been a lovely way to kind of celebrate your collaboration with him tonight through some of the films, and it was particularly lovely standing in the back of the room hearing people's response to friend of a friend video, which is so <laughs> right. I mean. Yeah. Are we getting a video from him for every song on this record? That would be great, wouldn't it? That'd be awesome. Hey. Um, He's definitely busy now. <laughs> <laughs> but how does it work? Do you just kind of do you give him the track and go, and he just comes up with the ideas, or do you talk about it, or how does that? What is that relationship? Um, uh, <laughs> it depends on the. It, each time is different, probably the same with you when you do the soundtrack, so each time is different. Um, Daydreaming was... No, actually Daydreaming was wild, because Daydreaming was sort of... I was obsessed about this idea of about walking through doors. I haven't told anyone about this. We sent Paul the song, he rings me up and said, I got this idea, idea that we should, you should just walk through an infinite amount of doors. No way! <laughs> <laughs> Wild. All the boys he says, I think you should do a dance video, I would say. <laughs> I think I've done that. Um, uh, so it doesn't work every time. <laughs> um, uh, it's very, really hard to describe. Um, Anima, there was lots of laughing. Um, him laughing behind the camera. Um, at me. No, no, because we, well, you know, we're trying to do slapstick in our um, twisted way. Um, I love that he kept a little smile in as well in Wall of Eyes. There's just one little moment where you kind of have a little kind of just a little chuckle, and it's kind of just, he's kept it in there. It's really brilliant. Right. It's really, really, really good. By the way, there is a special prize for anybody who manages to spot the phone box, um, which is very close to where we are right now. That features in the video. Um, and actually, when you walk out, you'll see the, the restaurant as well. There you go. Um, but 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 with um, with that video with um, with friend with friend, mm. what did, did he just? He was like, okay, kids, a school, you're playing in front of them. Yeah, no, I didn't say anything. <laughs> Everybody just said yes, right? Well, it's it's Tom's kids in the Stanley's in the foot in the. Which one is he? One of the, what do you know one what he's uh, One of the many ways. Okay, one of the many ways. <laughs> is he the one who's asleep? Like me. <laughs> is he the one who's asleep? Uh, Thankfully not. They're looking sleepy. But... What, um, what is it that that collaboration for you is one that you return to? Though? Why do you, you know, why is he someone that you, you know, work with? Where do you head? You work with, you know, Johnny, your, your relationship's extraordinary with him on the film stuff, and you know, it is with the smile as well. I would say to Tom, the thing about um, the Wall of Eyes, especially, is that it looks like it's been made by someone who's really excited to own a film camera, which, which describes him exactly. He's still utterly, you know, amazed at the whole process of making films and yeah. the whole images. The whole of that video is is uh, the camera geek out. It is yeah. because we did. It's all shot. Uh, all the multiple exposures shot in camera, and all the. Zooming in and out shit is, is hand crank, um, multiple exposures. Uh, e every conversation was about um, lenses and, and, and how we're going to pull off this, this, this. I just had this obsession about multiple exposure things. So I was sending him all these sort of uh, well, 1920s, 1930s experiments of photography. And, it's like, <laughs> and then, but then we got into this, this idea of this technique. It was super fun. But completely kamikaze. The the final shot where I'm sitting along along the I'm sitting along the table like that is all in camera, um, and a guy pushing a dolly back and forward with a timer and someone counting as he did it to make sure that I don't know if this makes any sense. Does this make sense? Yeah. <laughs> but if, in terms of like technical things, if it went if I made one mistake. It was, the whole thing was screwed. We'd have to start all over again from the beginning. Um, and that kind of stuff, I think we really enjoy that kind of challenge, yeah. that sort of thing. You know, as you say, Paul is a massive camera head. <laughs> Obviously, he would be, but I mean, no, really. <laughs> um, um, 
With regards to the tracks that are on the record, you know, we, we got the, the kind of hidden secret track tonight as well, the playback. How do you decide what goes on the record? Because obviously for people who've seen you live as well, there are tracks that you've played live that haven't made it onto either records as well. So that kind of journey where you're working out the kind of what's right for this record, is that a, what is that journey? Is that an easy decision process or how do you kind of navigate that or feel that? I mean, the wall of eyes just sort of, I mean, there's more songs that we've recorded, but those eight just sort of seem to fit together. And that wasn't really a conscious thing, I don't think. It was just, they just seemed to work together somehow and sound kind of, just to sort of see that, I think. But, um, we should add that the secret track's not called What's This Then? It's not. <laughs> it's not. It's called Tiptoe. Yeah. Nothing about tulips. Does that make sense? Tipped around the tulips? Okay, I'll shut up. I've got some questions from Discord for you. Are you ready for this? Some great names as well on this. And I'll, I'll get some questions from you guys in a second. Um, <clears throat> this is from Krylin. Hi, Smile. Uh, why were bodies laughing, colours fly, and just eyes and mouth not included on either of the two records, despite being regularly included in set lists? Because that's how we roll. <laughs> Good answer. Um, that's smile, by the way. <laughs> yes, Tom. Um, this is one of the questions that came in from Underground Cat Garage. Um, <laughs> For all the Smile members, do you have a favourite spot you go to record? Any particular environments you work best in? Well, I mean, now... It always frustrated me, the whole sort of... Thank you. Can you hear me the back? Okay. I've never really liked the whole, let's get the vibe right before we start recording thing with candles and lighting and... I think recording should be like a brightly lit, slightly scientific thing that you turn up for on time in the morning. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Stop working. Leave it. 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 Leave yeah. Lightning sound great. There we go. We'll pass that on. Um, <laughs> this is from Apple Scruff O two. Um, what's your guys' favourite PTA movie? My favourite is Punch Drunk Love. Do you have a favourite Paul Thomas Anderson movie? I do really like Licorice Pizza. I think it's yeah. pretty amazing. There will be blood. Yeah. Oh, I would be blood because I didn't really know you were doing that. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> what point did you know when you were in the cinema? I didn't really know. No, I mean, I didn't know you were. You did it on the sly, and then the next thing you know, the film's out. Like, okay, well, what's this? Proudest punch. Yeah, yeah. I was. Have you got a favourite, Johnny? Uh, I mean, Punch Drunk is amazing. Adam Sandler is so great in that, isn't he? Mm. Yeah, I love the film. And Mental. Mm. No, sorry, um, 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 Mental. Me no, no, Memento, I mean Christopher Nolan there. Um, <laughs> my God, my brain, sorry. Tom Cruise. Magnolia. Magnolia, Magnolia. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and Master Way the Cock. Yeah, that was my favorite. <laughs> yeah. And the Amy Mann soundtrack. And, and the Frogs. And the Frogs. The Frogs. Fucking Frogs, yeah, exactly. At what point do you sit with the scripts and at this point, <laughs> we are now going to have frogs. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Only Paul Thomas Anderson. Um, this is from Apollo. Oh no, we're going to go with I Love Tofu first. Um, what's your favourite unreleased track? Okay. We do try and release them all, don't we? She says. <laughs> I mean, the ones, the ones we haven't released, we just haven't recorded properly yet, or we're working on, or we not finished the lyrics. Yeah. They may well yeah. be released in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. um, Apollo says, "What's your take on the create?" This is a huge question. What's your take on the creative process? Are you noodlers, or do you start with a motif in your head and recreate it? Favorite chords. <laughs> <laughs> Is that me? No, it's favourite chords is definitely you. That's you, go on. Do favorite the chords chord. first. Yeah, go on. Chords. 
You get three. I mean, they're all wonderful, aren't they? <laughs> She's in a child. Uh, uh, the first question, uh, are we do noodlers? Noodlers, or do you start with a motif in your head and recreate it? We're not, we're not jammers, no, no. We no, don't, no, no. We don't understand jamming, no. <laughs> well, we it's only jam. not to record. It says we don't jam, but that's actually not record, weird. not to sort of... No, it's it's search or something. <laughs> we experiment, no, we, we fuck about. <laughs> we play around. I mean, I, I think the creative process is playing around. Playing. If you, the only time I couldn't write anything was when I suddenly started taking it seriously. Around the time the critics started saying that we were good at what we did was around the time I got really confused <laughs> and didn't really like what we were doing. So, uh, so I think playing is something you do for you. I mean, obviously, at some point. Um, Especially when you work on your own, it's different when you work with other people, but you just have a bunch of things and you're working them up, and, and, but you're not saying, oh, this is my job. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a weird business, because uh, you don't clock in and clock out, but actually you do. Um, he, uh, I, he, him and I, and you, I know we all, this is, this is what we do. So, um, but it's not, uh, it's not like, uh, finishing an assignment um, but you always you have pieces in a room you have uh, I always think of um, not to compare in any way Picasso at all but um, just <laughs> the, no 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 but just because the best the way, best way of describing songwriting to me is I saw this picture of him um, in his studio by the way he was a real nine to fiver um, <laughs> and the rest uh, and he would have unfinished canvases all around the room in various stages mm -hmm. uh, and that's what it feels like music writing music feels like that um, it's important to, to know when to stop as well and go home and have some dinner and hang out with the kids <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. time because it, it, it never really stops but yeah, you do have to kind of clock on how, how do you know when a song's done like how do you know when to stop Sam? <laughs> when you run out of ideas, I mean, when... That's a kind of two-stage process because uh, you have the... Um, there's the tortuous finishing, finishing thing, which, which is never that easy. Because you know, even right at the end, you can do one thing and you can break it. Uh, and then you've got to figure out how you broke it. And then you've got to two steps back. So, that, but that's a sort of technical thing, was finish the actual song. It comes roughly around the time I finish the lyrics, I guess, <laughs> for me. I'm like, phew. Um, this is a question from Bel Air Jeff, who is a question for Johnny. Have you had any time to enjoy any video games lately? Have you any recent favourites? Recent ones? I mean, I got a little bit bored with most 3D games that just seem to involve running and shooting. And I mean, for me, nothing since Warfare has been. What are you talking about? I've got a war for me recently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, people play games. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, um, we sometimes it's less so than other times. We we just had uh, Stanley had this thing about these using particular paints, and I was obsessed that, that uh, it should feel like a topographical map of some description. So that's about all we had. Um, but mostly we were just doing mm, about the joy. You know, the first record was done during the pandemic, and a lot of the energy of that and the second record in some ways is all knock on still from that period of like the joy of actually being in, in the room with someone and, and, and you know, having a creative conversation with them and like, woohoo! You know, so a lot of deciding to paint like we were painting, like we were looking, swatch, swapping canvases and wiping each other's work out, was just because we were having a laugh. You know, it was fun. It was like a celebration of something. Can't believe we do this for a living, etc. You know, they just, just have a road in Abbey Road when we were recording. Yeah, we're painting there all day whenever you know things weren't being done. So it was kind of so nice. I think that was the most fun I've had in a long time. Oh. We had these big BW speakers set up. And because uh, it was, you know, Johnny's written the scores and, uh, and well, you know, I just came in and heckled sometimes in the room, <laughs> holding a paintbrush. In his dungarees, in proper <laughs> overalls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Covered yes, in paint. Yes, the overalls, oh. sorry. That's lovely. Well, we've got time for a couple of questions in the room before we we run out of time. So, um, who's got the microphones? Find someone with, a, with their hand up and give them a microphone if that's okay. We've got one on each side. Go for it. Hello. Tell us your name and what's your question. Hello, sorry. Um, my name's Loz. I just want to ask a quick question. So, first of all, I that album is probably the most prog album I've heard this year. <laughs> but what is your most recent music that's an influence on what you make today? Recently made, recently, you mean? Recently made. Recently made. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know more. <laughs> It's too, uh, it's too sketchy the way I listen to music, really. I couldn't say, oh, I... Most recent you listened to. Oh. Changing his tune now. <laughs> <laughs> He's just done a bunch... You just sent me a bunch of choral stuff for that Apple Tracks thing. Yes. That's, some of the stuff's insane, but I don't know the name of it. <laughs> Johnny, would you like to elaborate? <laughs> I mean... I mean, I could get my phone out, but that's lame, isn't it? That's fine. <laughs> yeah. 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 You carry on. No, no. Well, I'm not moving. What about you? <laughs> Me? Yeah. Uh, I mean... <laughs> I just can't remember shit. <laughs> Tom? <laughs> wow. I can name a bunch of things, but... Uh, I don't know, I've been listening a lot to a guy called Jimmy Jeffrey. That's one thing, but I mean, that's one of many things. What was that brand piece that was talking about this morning, the right thing? Oh, Telling. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. That's insane. It's amazing. It's, um, it's based on the Psalms. Uh, Steve Reich wrote it, and he used all the instruments that are mentioned in the Bible. So it's just, it's supposed to, you know, it's a, a nod to what, what would have been heard. And it's just amazing music because it's all... Obviously, just on paper, there's no electronics, but it sounds like there's all these delays going on and all this processing, but it's all just being done with acoustic Most, instruments. Mostly choral. In fact, a lot of what he's put on this list is choral, which makes me think, maybe we should do choir stuff. <laughs> I'm getting a hint here. Yeah, yeah. Well, choir, choir like strings, they, can, they, they tune to each other. It's, it's less of a, you know, when you're only playing piano, you're, it's always a compromise of what the pitches are. Mm -hmm. it's, but choir, it's just slightly altered and notes that you know about like I could be very boring for lots of people at this point so let's possibly move on move on then <laughs> 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 Thank you. I was interested I was okay next question hello, hello. Um, so Where are you? we've heard the oh, hello. 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 Um, I've heard the album once um, it sounds kind of quite psychedelic some of the strings in it have been compared to things like Day in the Life so the question is, was there any kind of recording in Abbey Road, anything 
Beatles he influenced you? We really be... fucking tried not to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were in Abbey Road. Yeah. Like, let's not do that, eh? Hey? Yeah, that's often, that's often a reason not to want to go there. You know, yeah. sort of, yeah. I mean, the, the fact that we choose to do a, a tuning sweep thing um, halfway through Bending Ectic was like, that's just because he wanted that to happen rather than like, hey, let's do a wheel. <laughs> I mean, that's the weird thing about Abbey Road, I have to say. Abbey Road is like the best fucking studio in London. Um, but there's like this touristy element that they have to deal with when people go in to say they've been at Abbey Road, which um, as people like us who've been working on and off there since the 90s, it's a bit depressing because it is a fantastic place. We did have um, to clear out one weekend for the Sydney Hyde to some people to come in and record or something. You remember that? It's a little weird. What, why are they having a dinner? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was some like business people who wanted to make a, make record a song in Abbey Road, so they got hired. <laughs> 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 yeah, and there's no no bands going to record there now, really. I don't think. Yeah, they were Not really often. chuffed that a band had turned up because people just go there to have their photo taken. But then the studios are really struggling, and it's tough to so, yeah. you know anything that keeps it going. Frankly, is amazing. It's Which a is thing. mental because they're the best trained, best best studio. yeah for sure. Yeah. People who work there, amazing. And they can't kind of cope with having like a band, you know, three piece band to like a hundred and twenty piece orchestra in that in that one place as well, which is extraordinary. You know, They're all coming in out. Yeah, the orchestra's coming in that one room. A lot of stuff going on. It's it's really cool. It's yeah. really cool. Um, we got a one more question, I think, as well, over our microphone. There we go. I I this is. I didn't think I'd get picked. <laughs> 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 you can either. pass the mic on to someone else. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm just wondering, um, like, I like making things, but I struggle very much with anxiety around releasing things, and I just, it makes me want to, like, tear my eyes out every time I think of doing something like that. And I'm wondering if any of you, have, like, any advice or have gone through a similar thing, like, yeah. early on? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, have you, have you trained, have you gone to art school or anything like that, or would you just make um, stuff? I, I'm in a band, and I okay. want to, I want to drop the balls at uni. I think uh, you, you've got to, you've got to be able to stand up in front of people, if, even if it's difficult, um, because you, it has to become real, and that is, you have to share it with other human beings because it's a form of communication, you know. Um, so, however you figure out. Com being comfortable doing that, you have to do it because the, you, you don't work for yourself. I mean, even though I was talking earlier about the playing thing, you're playing and you're exploring and blah, 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 but ultimately when it comes down to it, you, you, we're human beings, we're social creatures, and uh, you'd be surprised. I think always kind of what you get back from people. Um, and if, if you're in a good place, even bad feedback is useful. Uh, if, if you love what you're doing, it has to be able to withstand that process. I mean, when I was at art school, I was, literally, I was kicked out of painting because the, everyone just said, you're shit, get out. Um, which is fair enough. Uh, <laughs> it really was. And I, you know, I went AWOL for three months um, and came back better because of it. Um, it was like something that I had to go through. You, know, you have to sometimes, uh, if, if you're choosing to work in the creative industry, you have to be able to stand up uh, and show what you do somehow. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's just something that's in here, which, which, which is no good for you and no good for anybody else. being here tonight um, to share the new album with us and with everybody. Um, can't wait for the tour in March as well. Um, good luck with that and the prep for all that. Please, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Thank you. Thank you.